The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the priestly division of Abiha. His wife was from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both were righteous in the eyes of God, observing all the commandments and ordinance of the Lord blamelessly. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were advanced in years. But when he was serving as priest in his divisions turned before God, according to the practice of the priestly service, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary of the Lord to burn incense. Then, when the whole assembly of the people was praying outside at the hour of the incense offering, the angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right of the altar of incense. Zechariah was troubled by what he saw, and fear came upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, because your prayers have been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall name him John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He will drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb, and he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of fathers towards children and the disobedient to the understanding of the righteous to prepare a people fit for the Lord. Then Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. And the angel said to him in reply, I am Gabriel, who stand before God. I was sent to speak to you and to announce to you this good news. But now you will be speechless and unable to talk until the day these things take place, because you did not believe my word which will be fulfilled at their proper time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah, and they were amazed that he stayed so long in the sanctuary. But when he came out, he was unable to speak to them, and they realized he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He was gesturing to them, but remained mute. When his days of ministry were completed, he went home. After this time, his wife Elizabeth conceived and she went into seclusion for five months, saying, So has the Lord done for me at this time when he has seen fit to take away my disgrace before others. The Gospel of the Lord. We most definitely do not have a prudish God. And you can see this right in the opening prayer of our Mass. O oh God, who through the childbearing of the Holy Virgin graciously revealed the radiance of your glory to the world. Our Heavenly Father began this journey for us by forming us out of the dust and the ground, fingernails underneath covered with dirt and grime as he formed us. And he blows air into the nostrils of Adam. And since then, it seems like he's particularly interested in getting his hands dirty for our sake. And you can see, even in the birth of Samson and John the Baptist here, from the book of Judges we see in the gospel this morning, these are miraculous births. They're fantastic, but God, not to be outdone, 
by himself literally inserts himself in flesh and blood of the human experience. And so, inserting himself into humanity, not coming on a cloud of glory, but coming in conceiving, making his presence known in actual birth, in resting in the womb for nine months. It's there that he consecrates the womb. He consecrates conception. He consecrates birth. He consecrates the love of man and woman with all its messiness sometimes. He consecrates the sanctity of marriage. He consecrates the sanctity of life. He consecrates the sanctity of family. How much more hands-on can he be? How much more inserted in our human experience can he be? Oh, yeah, there's more. And so he enters into even the foreboding tunnel of gloom of death, the death of human experience. He dies on the cross. He enters the grave. He participates in the resting of our body and death. He doesn't necessarily experience decay, but his body has definitely been brutalized. He gives new meaning to the glory of the body. He gives new meaning to the glorified body that we all long for. He has indeed been dwelling among us and graciously revealing the radiance of his glory to the world. Here is your God who comes to save you. Regina, Jenny, let her